Okay, we are now recording. Great. Well, good behavior is, is all our hallmark, uh, but I will go ahead and begin. Well, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 24th, 2021 BAR Large Virtual Meeting. Uh, my name is Jay White. I'm the acting chair this evening. Other uh, board members present this afternoon are James Metters, Leon Scott, Kara Wheeler, and Andy Fava. City staff that are present are Tori Parrish, Lawrence Courtney, and Linda Bennett. Uh, the order of the meeting will be as follows. First will be an introduction and overview of the project by city staff. And then a 10-minute time period for an applicant presentation. Um, and then that would be followed by any questions of the applicant by the board or staff. Now, any and all presenters should clearly state your name for the record. And anyone that's affiliated with the project, uh, owners, developers, designers, consultants, or et cetera, should speak during this portion rather than during public comment. After the applicant presentation uh, will be an, an equivalent period of time for public comment. Uh, and the applicant does not respond directly to the comments during that period. Uh, and again, for any member of the public who may be speaking, please clearly state your name for the record. This will be followed by city staff comments and recommendation, and then a five minute period uh, for the applicant to respond or clarify public comment or city staff comments and recommendations. Um, and then after that, there'll be board discussion and a vote. Uh, the applicant may clarify any inaccurate information when recognized by the chair. Um, it helps to have your video on so I can see you uh, requesting to speak uh, and then uh, wait to be called on. Otherwise, only speak if you're asked a question by the board member. Uh, none of tonight's brief agenda has been withdrawn or deferred. Uh, please remember to turn off all cell phones and other distracting devices and limit your comments to architecture only. Mr. Courtney, and go on into the meeting protocol. Uh, staff is controlling the PowerPoint presentation. That includes everything submitted by the applicant by the deadline in accordance with the submittal requirements. Applicants need only to ask staff to advance to the next slide during the presentation. Applicants, staff, and board members are required to give their name whenever speaking. Video and microphone have been disabled for all attendees. Attendees, not board members or staff, will only give, be given the uh, capability to speak when they are called on during the public comment period. The chat and QA functions have been disabled for everyone. Now during public comment, the applicants and all team members and the public have been required to register, indicate the project they wish to comment on and submit any documents in advance of the meeting. Just as in an in-person meeting, all applications heard today are part of the public meeting format. If you have registered and will speak during the public comment portion of the meeting, you will need to state your name and address for the record. Those members of the public that have registered will be called on in order by project, and members of the public that speak are encouraged to remain in the meeting for the completion of the item that they've commented on. Uh, staff will call on registered members of the public to speak for each project. Unregistered members of the public who raise their hand will not be called on. Okay, so board actions. Board members will be polled by the chair for comments and for your vote on a motion. Each member when voting should respond yay in favor or nay, not in favor. Uh, the chair will reread the motion verbatim and the board member making the motion should correct the chair if they have not reread the motion accurately. If a board member needs to recuse, they will be temporar temporarily removed from the meeting and placed back in the meeting at the start of the next agenda item. If the board needs to go into executive session, which we do, uh, they will call into a separate conference line and all video and audio on Zoom will be temporarily turned off until we are ready to return to the regular meeting. Staff will issue results, including staff comments and the board motion to the applicant following the meeting. And the results will also be city, uh, posted on the city website. And as a reminder, these proceedings are being recorded. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a one agenda item. This is 578 Meeting Street. It is a request for approval for the complete demolition of all buildings on the site, with the exception of the front portions of buildings, which you'll see are marked CA and CB, as noted on sheet D7 in the applicant's presentation package. The, uh, the site is not rated, it's in the east side neighborhood. And the um, applicant's got some great context slides that I don't know if he wants to speak through, but um, this is the aerial, uh, this is the elevation from, sorry, <laughs> this is the elevation from Meeting Street. Um, and the applicant will get into a little more detail about what portion of this 
uh, they will be saving and what portions historic. This is another building on the site at the northwest corner. Um, you'll see that the front elevation of facing Meeting Street is in brick. The building was built in 1967 and it is a um, CMU block structure with, um, I'm so sorry. I, I'll start thinking and start talking again, but um, there's no real historic significance to that that we can see. This is another uh, view from Stewart Street looking south and west. Um, and these are across the street. I believe these are called the Grant Homes. These are across meeting. And this is a church on the site um, that um, it occupies another corner of the site that would be the northeast. Um, so it's not the full block, but this is the only other structure on the block. Okay, we'll have the applicant present. Can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, great. Um, I don't know why the video isn't working. Then. Um, I'm Jimmy Walker with Walker Concepts Architecture with Applicant for this uh, project, the site. And uh, we had a tour yesterday with some of the members and um, the preservation groups, which was very helpful because this site has a cluster of buildings uh, built many different times <laughs> over the uh, uh, past hundred years, actually. Um, so this site is located on the east side of Meeting Street, very near the on-ramp uh, to the Ravenel Bridge and um, um, some of the newer apartment buildings that have been built across the street. Next slide. These are some, these are some aerial photos from uh, four different directions of this site. This used to be the, um, the old, um, Cream Crest Dairy and Regis Dairy business that ran on this site uh, for many years. And we believe it shut down in 2011, but this was a, uh, um, a warehousing processing and distribution center for that dairy business. Uh, next slide. Straight on aerial view. So you can see the buildings that are existing uh, on the on the side, there is one pad that's left on Nassau Street of a metal building that was removed previously um, on there, but it's mostly parking areas and loading docks and delivery areas. Next slide. This is the current uh, actual as-built uh, survey of the site for the different buildings for your reference if you need. Next slide. These are the uh, Sanborn maps for this property um, through the time. And uh, the oldest map, as you can see on the top left, uh, this was some dwelling units in, in different lots back in the, on the uh, 1919 Sanborn map. The first building that we see on this site um, that still exists was a small portion of what is called CB in the application, uh, building CB. And at that time, it was a motorcycle repair shop or a motorcycle shop. And the owner's dwelling was right next to it where uh, building CA has been built since. You can see that there used to be some access sort of alley roads of uh, Oland and uh, one that was called Goldsmith Row, and, and um, in the 60s, these were basically abandoned um, on there. But the, the light blue building that you see there on the corner of Meeting and Olan, that it was the motorcycle shop, and the front portion of that um, is one of the uh, sections that we would like to save and incorporate into the new development. In 1944, um, what happened was the Cream Crest Dairy took over this um, building and they did a large expansion to the north and to towards the east to that motorcycle shop. 
and they connected them all together uh, into this building C. And that's what that was the first buildings for the uh, dairy business on the site. If you can go to the next, um, Sam Bourne there. Sixty-seven. There were some other uh, additions built to that building, um, receiving areas and processing areas. That's what you see in the yellow, orange, and pink to the rear of your. Yeah. And then uh, the small office building uh, was built in 1967 or around there. Um, that is the building further. Um, on the north corner of Meeting Street. And that was uh, just a typical um, CMU office building, um, slope wood roof on there. And there is a brick veneer on the facade, but we believe that what you see now is the original facade that was built in 67. Um, and then 1996, you can see where larger expansions were made. There was a, a cooling a, a large metal building, which you see that sort of connects all those pieces together, the green colored building. And that was a, a cooling area. And then to the rear, there was also um, uh, some further like a workshop and utility buildings on the rear. 2002, you don't see much change. I will go back. You can see there's a little building on the south corner there. That was built, we think around 1989, and it is a sort of decorative concrete block building, but that was a break room building that was added to the site. 2002, not much change there. And then if you could go to 2005, 2005 is, this was after uh, uh, Regis Dairy, actually took over the Cream Crest dairy in 62, um, we believe. And they built a, another uh, receiving area building uh, that abuts the oldest buildings there on Meeting Street that is in the darker blue. Um, that was basically a concrete block building. But one thing they did do was um, on the Meeting Street side, they, they used a painted brick and tried to pull off the original uh, facade of the building. Now, when one thing I didn't mention, you'll see in the photos, but that original motorcycle shop building and when the 1942 edition, they were joined, that is when the facade that you see with the front entrance there, and at one time that was the front entrance to the building, but of course that has since been completely blocked off on the interior. So, um, but what we, are proposing in this, which you'll see is, is trying to save that front portion, which we believe is the oldest remaining section that we could uh, save and incorporate to the new design. So you can go to the next slide now. This is basically all those buildings and diagrams with labels on them. And to the right, there is a legend that again, tries to give you the dates that those sections were built on the site. And as um, we will go through each individual building very quickly, um, but this is sort of an enlarged key plan basically with some information on it. You can go to the next slide. We'll start with building A. Oh, this is actually, okay, this is an overlay of just what we're requesting for demolition. And you can see that front section there, um, the wall along Meeting Street with the door entrance. And there is a return wall there to the north. Uh, we're proposing to try to save those. At one time, and you'll see a little later, but at one time, we believe there were windows in that facade and there's a there's a brick pattern they were enclosed at some point very similar to what was built across the street um, and we'd like to try to bring those back if we could next slide 
Okay, this is building A. This is the uh, office building on the corner, north corner. Um, as you can see, this is sort of a typical block building built in 67. Um, and it looks like they did use some sort of reclaimed brick on the facade, although it is uh, crumbling and becoming detached from that original uh, business. I read somewhere there, uh, in the report, I believe that at one time there was actually an insurance business running out of this, but um, you can see that. And this is this building we are uh, requesting demolition on. You can go to the next side. Some interior shots of the um, office space. And then we've got some above ceiling shots of the wood framing, typical two by wood framing above ceiling. Next slide. This is building B, which actually is in two sections, but this is the large metal um, uh, cooling building uh, that was built and connected all the buildings together pretty much. Um, Pretty standard uh, loading dock area um, to the east, um, but this building is also being requested for demolition. And the, we've got a couple of slides. You go next, um, and you can just see some interior shots of, of the interior of this metal building. Next, next. Okay, building C are the two original buildings that still exist or a portion thereof. Um, this is the section we're talking about saving. Um, you can see the entrance door and uh, that section um, on the bottom left. It's kind of hard to tell on this, but there is a little ad that was found uh, for Cream Crest Dairy that has that portion that we want to save. And in that, it's, it's very fuzzy, but you can tell that there were windows in those openings, and that's something that we would like to incorporate in the new design. Um, the building, uh, you can see exterior picture two. Yeah, that's, that's you can kind of tell um, there were windows in those openings. And if you look down below, Lawrence, if you could, I think you could see the brick patterns where they were, or they've been bricked in at some point. Okay, let's see. To the right, uh, Lawrence, if you could, yeah, exterior shot two. This is the section of um, the corner in 1942 when the expansion happened. Um, the two buildings, the original motorcycle shop building, the wall was removed, they've been connected. And that's when they built this, this actual facade. And this section that returns here is another uh, wall that we would like to, to save. Then behind that, you can tell it's with the different additions, the walls have been removed, cut open with loading dock doors and all uh, of the building. You can go to the next slide. Okay, this is some of the other uh, uh, exterior shots on the south side of the motorcycle shop building, which is building CB. You can see on the bottom left, there is a section of what we believe may have been one of the walls, but um, in the 30s and 40s, the window openings uh, were enclosed there. And then there was a section when this um, 2005 edition on the left was built, you can see there's a section where it was replaced with block to the right where the uh, large uh, loading dock door is. That's one of the newer um, additions that was built on the rear of that CB building. And a couple of close ups there of the enclosed windows. Next slide. Oh, there we go. My picture came up. I've been ignoring that, Lawrence. Um, okay, looking at this key plan, build, uh, building CA, that was a 1942 edition. This shows some of the interior shots. And if you look at photo two 
and four and three, those are actually an office and a bathroom that were built in front of that front door that we want to save. So the, the entrance has been completely blocked off. So we would like to remove those, those interior partitions, of course, for that section. Okay. Uh, if you look at building one here um, on building CB, this was the space where the motor shop, motorcycle shop built in 22 was, and it has some temporary bracing from some roof issues that have happened in the past. Uh, they've had to overbuild the original roof with more two by framing, but right now it has structural supports in that original building. But you can see in building one where the wall was removed when um, CA was connected to it and they were combined and towards the rear of that space, you can see where um, those walls were removed to do the rear expansions. Next sheet, please. This is above the ceiling of that uh, CB. Um, you can kind of see the two, two roofs and some of this scab framing and areas where they've tried to improve the drainage on that building um, roof. Next slide. This is uh, the CC section, which was the rear additions to, to both of those frontal buildings with the loading dock area. Okay, next slide. Give them dates here. Okay. Um, this is above the ceiling of that rear CC section. Built in 1942. Next slide. This is actually the 2005 um, receiving addition, the last uh, addition to the site. This is the, the wall, a portion of the wall, the higher wall that you see on the facade on Meeting Street where they did use brick and, and Regis tried to pull in some of the similar details to the original building. This is actually the newest section. This is being requested for demolition. Next slide. Interior shots of that space. Next slide. This is the, I, I guess it's decorative block, concrete block building that served as the uh, break room on the site. This is also uh, built in 89 and this is being requested for demolition. Next slide. This is some of the rear processing areas uh, of building, what we're calling building F. Those were built um, basically, uh, we have one section, uh, 1964 and 1967. Those are um, requested for demolition. Next slide. Interior shots of those spaces. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> this is building G, which was built in two sections, built in 67 and 60, and sorry, 1996. And these serve as, service as processing areas, um, small additions, block building additions that were done, and these would be demolished also. Next slide and final slide. Uh, this is the rear portion, building A, built at two different times, 67 and 96. They did um, lots of additions at the same years, increments it seems, but this was a workshop building um, on the site. So basically after going through this, um, we feel like there is enough of the original, the first two buildings when they were combined and really the only thing that has real character to it is this, um, this front section, entrance section that, uh, that we saw on that um, advertisement. What we would like to do is try to save those walls, 
um, open back up with windows that we believe existed. We've had a hard time finding pictures of some of the older buildings, um, or at least the oldest section of this building. We've looked everywhere. Um, but that's what we would like to do, and it could possibly be the main entrance, or we could incorporate it as the main entrance for the new development to come. So we request your um, uh, approval tonight for this demolition request. And if there are any questions, I'm open to them. Thank you very much. Hey, great, thank you. Uh, any questions from the board or staff? Yeah, Jay, I've got a question for uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, a couple of times you've said that uh, you will be trying to save those two facades and you'll do what you can to save them, but are, are you going to save them? I mean, it is going to happen? Yes, that's, that's yes, we are going to incorporate. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. That's our attempt, I guess, when I say trying, I mean, that's what we're, we're trying to do that in this request, we would like to say that, yes. And we've had some earlier discussions with... Uh, Lawrence and Tori, and we've talked about that, and um, that's sort of the direction that we want to go. Thank you. Okay, this any other questions? Yeah, go Leon ahead, Scott, uh, just a, a quick one here. Um, what is the, and, and I, I, I may not have heard it, but the, the, the brick building there, uh, right there at the corner of, uh, on Meeting Street, um, that actually has the 578 uh, uh, address still on it. What what, yeah. was that, did you say 1967 or? Yes, it was built in 67. Okay. Okay. And you can see the block structure, but what appears, they may have used some reclaimed brick just attached to the base of it on Meeting Street. And then also um, the area there that um, where the loading dock um, that was used, the steel that was built into the brick. Um, that's there on Meeting Street. Did, did you say that that would that would also go? And 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 is that brick above that the original uh, brick? Steel. Oh, um, above the ceilings in some areas you can see some brick, um, but a lot of the walls, the lower exterior walls below the ceilings, a lot of those, especially between C A and C B. They've been replaced completely, removed, and to the rear of CB. Uh, there's a small section to, well, there's a section to the south of CB. That's where uh, there was a photo that showed where you could tell at some point there were some openings there. Yeah. Uh, we believe that may have been the original building, and that may have only been, there's a section of it there, but it doesn't connect to the front. I guess, okay. Uh, there was a photo where you can see um, above the ceiling where the wood framing is supported, you know, or built with the brick there. Okay. Thank you. Hey, anything else? I'm hearing none. Do, uh, do we have any stat uh, excuse me, public comment on this application? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Uh, well, let's move on then to city staff comments and recommendation. I'm going to start. I have them printed too. So I'll start um, as you get them pulled up. But um, Number one, staff appreciates the thorough research and clear organization of the applicant's presentation. Number two, staff agrees with the applicant's strategy of preserving and renovating the front portions of the CA and CB buildings. The south wall of building CB, while one of the oldest portions on the site has been considerably modified over the years, and while once having street frontage, its location in the middle of the current parcel would make it interior to any new large building massing. Building A, while having a somewhat interesting mix of older pieces and parts on the Meeting Street facade, and this is the smaller building at the um, northwest corner, has no cohesive character defining features. The remainder of the buildings are not historic. Um, number three, the Meeting Street facade of the portions to remain should be renovated as closely as possible to what is shown on the newspaper advertisement, as you saw on sheet D13, 
with appropriate materials being used at the new windows. And number four, the applicant should salvage as much material as possible. Look at that timing. The staff recommendation is approval of demolitions as submitted with the renovation of the Meeting Street facade of the portion to remain for the newspaper advertisement on sheet D13. And if you wanna leave that up for a few more seconds since I was reading them while you couldn't see them, that'd be fine. Okay, so any applicant clarification or response to that? Uh, no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Suspected not, all right, board discussion. <laughs> I'll, I'll say thank you to Mr. Walker as well for the, the, the detail in the presentation and even the buildings that were probably a, a given that, that they'd receive an approval, the ability to, to see all that and as well documented as, as he put that together is, is much appreciated. So thank you for that. And, and I agree with the staff recommendation. This is Carol Wheeler. Uh, I'd also like to applaud the applicant for the very thorough research that went into that presentation um, and the submittal package. And um, I also agree with staff comments. To me, the question was whether uh, this one south wall um, uh, would be worth uh, keeping of the TB building. Um, but um, I also agree that the renovation that happened in the 40s where C, A, and C, B came together that you keep that facade and that character as it creates almost a, a counterpart to the grand homes on the other side, um, at least from a scale point of view and, and the material, the color that was used there. So that would be good. It's, uh, I think that is a, a great uh, contribution to whatever will happen on the side, whatever the new design um, will become. Um, so, and, and because you have, you have um, I guess, chosen to choose that 40s, 40s or that uh, renovation from the 40s um, to maintain. I don't think the, that south wall from the 20s needs to be kept. Um, that wouldn't make sense anymore. And I agree with Steph as well, since it's in the center of the site, it would become an interior wall and it's no longer an exterior wall on the right of way. Um, yeah, I agree with staff comments. And I would just uh, um, mention that any bracing or shoring that will be proposed for um, um, for the facade that will be kept uh, should be submitted to staff, um, to city staff, or correct me if I'm wrong, Tori, um, just to make sure that the, uh, the bracing won't damage any brickwork and, and will be done in a sensitive way. I, um... I I, I think that sounds good. I'm not sure what precedent we have there. I mean, I'm not sure what we've done in the past, but I'll let Lawrence throw in an answer there. I think typically any bracing or shoring needs to be submitted to the city for review. So, uh, Jay, uh, I hope that Jimmy's clients are listening to all these nice comments that have been made. About <laughs> that's be good. Um, I think it's admirable that uh, you are proposing to keep those two facades, and I am also in support of uh, uh, Tori's comments and those comments made by other board members. Uh, this is Leon Scott again. I'm 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 sort of following every again. Excellent uh, presentation, well done, and I'm also um, in agreement with the uh, staff recommendation. Okay. I think we've run the mm -hmm. gamut and I, I have no comments. So any, anyone want, like to make a motion? This is Carol Wheeler. Um, I'll make a motion for approval of the demolitions as submitted um, with staff comments regarding the renovation of the Meeting Street facade and board comment regarding sensitive bracing and shoring. All right. Sorry, I'm just writing this down so I don't misread it later. Long motion. Uh, yeah, so um, so what I captured was uh, approval of demolition as submitted with staff comments. 
and with board comments regarding bracing and shoring. Yes. Okay. Motion made. Do we have a second? This is Leon Scott. I second. All right. Motion, motion made and seconded. Um, Mr. Metters, how do you vote? Yay in favor. Okay. Mr. Favor. Yay in favor. All right. Ms. Wheeler. Yay in favor. All right. Mr. Scott. Yay in favor. All right. And I vote the same. So the motion passes 5 0. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Well done. Now, I have to say it's confusing with all those different pieces, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to go through. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. So, um, so we now need to, as a board, participate in legal updates and training, and we'll do this via executive session. Uh, I need a motion in order to do that. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to move to executive session. Okay. Second. I'll second that with Teddy Favor. All right. So I'll do a I'll do a roll call on this just to, for form's sake. Uh, Mr. Scott. Yep. All right, Mr. Ms. Wheeler. Yeah, in favor. Okay. Uh, let's see, Mr. Uh, Mr. Metters. Yeah, in favor. All right, Mr. Favor. Yeah, in favor. And I vote the same. So, okay, so, um, so we're now going to go into executive session uh, for legal training and updates. Uh, when we're finished, we'll return back to this this session on this uh, Zoom channel, so to speak. Um, but uh, in the meantime, the board is going to access a, another another Zoom call as a means of a, of a conference call, and uh, we will return shortly. Very good. Be shortly. All right. That means alternates too now. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Did y'all get another another link to another meeting from Julia or from Lawrence? I'm gonna need to jump off this call and go jump on that one. So so leave the meeting and go ah, okay. click on whatever link they sent you.
looks like everybody is back. Looks like we uh, handled the technological hurdle of jumping between the Zoom calls pretty well. Um, so um, now that we're here, uh, do I have a motion to come out of the executive session? That's so moved. All right, and seconded. I'll second. Okay, perfect. I'll call a roll vote just, just for form's sake. Ms. Wheeler. Aye in favor. Okay, uh, Mr. Favor. Aye in favor. All right, Mr. Scott. Yeah, in favor. All right, Mr. Metters. Yeah, in favor. And I vote likewise. All right. All right, so we are out of executive session and just for the benefit of the public, no votes were taken during executive session. Uh, and there is actually no further business on our agenda tonight. So um, I suppose, uh, Ms. Parrish, Mr. Courtney, we are adjourned, are we not? Yes, we are. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all. And we'll see you in a couple thank of weeks. You. Thank, thank you. you all right. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.